Hi everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Alana and if you've come to my YouTube channel, you've come to watch me paint in acrylics or better yet, to paint with me. So today we're going to be painting something that was a little bit outside of my box. Something I don't normally paint, but I had a great time painting it. Let me show you what we're going to be painting today. We're going to paint this beautiful lady, which I have titled The Bridesmaid. Um, I think she's going to be a very educational one for all of us. I had a good time painting her. I wanted to work on skin tones and movement of hair and um, just had a great time creating this one. And I love how the background turned out as well. So I think you're going to really enjoy painting this one with me. So let's grab our paints and our paint brushes and let's get started everybody. <laughs> Okay, I've got my surface prepped here. I applied a coat of multi-purpose sealer with a damp sponge, and then I applied two coats of just Snow White with the same damp sponge. I've let it dry and I lightly sanded it. So now I wanna put some colors in the background. I'm gonna use my media fluid paints here. Uh, these are my fluid acrylic paints. They're Deco Art brand. I got Hansy Yellow Medium, Green Gold, Cerulean Blue, Viridian, and a Dark Gray Value 3. I don't know if I'm going to use them all, but I have them all on my palette here, and I have just some regular white paint. So I'm going to take a large filbert brush, and I'm going to pull out just a little bit of some yellow and stroke that in there, grab some green. I want to do this all wet on wet here. And a little bit of blue, we'll get a little bit of darker green here. I'm gonna grab some white and some blue and put over here. And I want to keep this fairly wet because I'm gonna come back with my paper towel um, when I get done and wipe some of this off. Down here in the bottom, I want it to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to grab some gray and some green and put that down here. And then go back with a little bit of blue over here. And a little bit of green. Add just a touch of blue to it to make it a little bit of a darker green doesn't take very much of this paint so don't put tons of it out. I put way more out than I need here but so it looks pretty streaky right here so I'm gonna take my I'm gonna actually mist this with some water because it's already starting to dry a little bit. Just took my spray misting bottle and misted it and then I want to come and just kind of wipe that a little bit while it's wet. I want to remove some and give a, a fun little background here. Some areas I might remove a little bit more and get all the way to the white. Like right here, I think I want to remove a little bit more, so I'll wet that a little bit more. Spray a little bit more water on there. And you don't have to do this at all. You can keep your background just a, a white color or a, a really light blue color. So this is gonna give it a little bit of a rustic kind of look. Take a little bit of that off up there. Just by spray. I completely covered my whole painting surface with paper so that I don't make a huge mess here. I'm going to remove a little bit more of that up there. I think I really would like to have just a touch darker blue up there. It looks almost green, but it's just blue. So I'm just going to very gently streak through that while it's wet. And then down here with the gray, 
I think I'll do the same thing, apply a little bit more of the gray down here. Have it coming up just a little bit. And then just very gently touching my paper towel to it and streaking through that just a little bit. A little bit different um, texture down here. some blue in there. Try and pull it this way. There we go. I like that much better. So we just have a fun little background here. I still feel like it's got too much yellow up here. So I'm going to streak this. down through there just a little bit and you can really just play around with this background you can you can use regular acrylic paints if you want um, with some water or some kind of medium to thin it down and then just streak it across your background I think that just gives a, a fun little background here very wet so it started drying like almost immediately. Slightly dampen it right there. See if I can't. Buff that hard line out just a little bit. Okay, I think I'm going to leave it there and let it dry and see how it looks when it dries. And like I said, you can use acrylic paints, you can leave it just plain white or make it a really pretty blue. But um, this is the background that I'm going to start with for this project. I think it's really pretty. I wanted it to be kind of like we're outside, so I have a little bit of outdoor colors. Okay, let me get this dry. We're going to begin on the uh, skin tone color here. Um, I'm going to be using Americana, Decorate Americana paints. So this color is Natural Buff. I'm going to put a little bit of it out. I'm going to put a little bit of um, raw sienna out. I really like this color for a skin color, but it's a little bit muted, maybe slightly on the brown side. I'm going to put a little bit of raw sienna and a tiny little bit of a pink color. And that will be Razzleberry. So we've got Natural Buff Raw Sienna and Razzleberry. This will just give a slight pink tint to our skin tone. I'm going to take my palette knife here because I want to mix enough of this to do her face, her neck, and all of her area back here. So we'll probably use all of this color right here and I might add a little bit more to it. And we'll just make a nice little good size mix of it because we'll have to apply two coats and so we might as well make sure we've got enough mixed up. Okay, I want to dip into my uh, raw sienna right here. Just a little, little tiny bit of it. Just on the end of my palette knife. Okay, that might even be too much. I'll touch some off right there. And I'm going to mix that in. You can always come back and add more, but it's really hard to take away. Okay, I want to get a little tiny bit of this pink. And this pink has just a little bit of a uh, blue tint to it. And I'll need more. Sneak up on this. Don't try to get too much at once because it's like, oh, it's not turning pink enough. Well, we need to take it slow. I'm going to get a little bit more raw sienna. A little bit on the tip right there. 
Mix that in. And more of this pink. And if you want it to be a lighter color or a more pink color or a more orange color, you can definitely do that. I might grab a little bit of white to lighten that up because when that dries, that's going to be pretty dark. Pretty dark skin tone and I don't want my skin tone to be super dark. No more white. I'm going to take quite a good amount of white here. Mix that in. can already see the difference between that color and this color. I want more pink in it, so I'm going to add some more pink. Okay, we're getting a nice pink tone there now. That's a really nice pink. I'm going to add more white. I want it even lighter than that. And if you want it a little bit more on, um, you know, to have a little bit more of an orangey tint to it, you can add just a, a little bit of yellow in there. I think that's a nice mix. So we started out with the natural buff, which that's the, the color of it right there. And now we've got this pinky color here by adding the pink that we'll be using in the flowers later, which is Razzleberry, the raw sienna, and some white. Now, as I brush this in, if I feel like it needs more white, I'll add more white to it. But for now, I'm just going to leave it. And I will squirt some more water or um, white out of my palette so that if I need it, I will have it. And we're going to get painting on her. So I'm just going to grab a flat brush. This is a size 12 flat. I'm also going to spritz this side of my palette with some water. Now my palette here is just one of those peelable palettes. And I've just covered it with Glad Press and Seal. You don't have to cover it with Glad Press and Seal, but I like to just peel it off and then throw it away. But the paint itself will peel from the palette, so don't feel like you have to um, put the Glad Press and Seal on there. I definitely need a little water mixed in with this. Thin it down. Give it a nice consistent consistency so that we can brush it on nicely. Nice smooth coats. And that's a nice pink color, at least for this first color. Now we've got that green underneath, so it's it's hard to say exactly how pink it will be when we apply our second color. We may need to add more white to it. That's some hair right there. Now you could just paint right over that hair if you want to. It's just a strand of hair. We can come in and add it back in later. So I think I will just go right ahead and paint over it. Oops, not out, not all the way out to it. We want to still follow the, the shape of the back here. And then we'll just come back in and add that, that line back in when we're ready. This will give us a nice smooth, smooth layer of paint here. Put something in my paint right there. Alright, we've got the neck here. this long slender neck and then we'll go up to her face. Probably mixed way more paint than we actually need. Now 
the tone of it up here looks a little bit different because the, the green underneath is a different color. It's got some yellow in it, so it's making the skin up here look a little bit more of an orange color, which is fine because when we add our second layer on here, we'll smooth all those transition colors out. Okay, so that is the first layer of the skin. Now we want to add the first layer of the hair on here. And for the hair, I think I want some undertones of brown in here. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and paint it in with some raw sienna. It's, it's hopefully going to be blonde hair, if I can make it blonde hair. <laughs> but um, if not, then we will make it brown or red. Whatever works. You can definitely make your hair whatever color you want it to be. I'm going to try and go around to the flowers, but... I'm not too worried about them at this point because this is all under painting here so I'll probably go over some of it and I'll just paint over the whole thing because I don't want to have to limit myself so sometimes when we have to paint over and around things it causes stop and start marks that are not very pretty And we can just come back and put our flower flowers back in. I, I mostly did that for your benefit so that you could kind of see where we're going with this design. But I'm just going to paint over them. Not a problem. We'll have lots of stray hairs coming off of of her hair here. So this is how we're gonna start with her hair. We need to bring it because the flowers go around her head, so her hair should. here and then that will look like the flowers are going around okay her dress is a creamy color so I'm just going to take some of my raw sienna here and mix a little bit of white with it just to give us a an under painting here we can build on top of. So I just mixed a little bit of white in there. Now I wanted to tell you that with your background you could um, just do a, a black and white kind of gray mix background here. It's very wet paint. So it didn't go on very dark because it's super wet. Okay, I want all these layers to dry. So that I can come back and put the second coats on. So I will do that off camera because the second coats go on just exactly like the first coats went on. And then we're going to start uh, adding some details in here. Okay, so I wanted her hair to have more red undertones. That's why I used the raw sienna. But if you want her to have more brown undertones, you could use a brown, like a burnt sienna. Um, maybe a milk chocolate or something. Milk chocolate will have just a little bit of red in it. But it's really whatever kind of undertones you want the hair to have. Um, so we're going to start working on getting some color on her face now. 
So I want my Razzleberry and my white out. And my raw sienna, which I already have. And we're going to start just kind of blushing up her face a little bit. Now, if you want to um, make her a little more orange blush, you can add just a little bit of yellow to it. I probably won't, but um, I got it out there just in case as I move along, if I don't like where I'm going with this color, I can change it. So I want to grab a little stiffer brush here. Not such a great big one. Okay, I'm going to get my Mezzaluna. This is a large size. really like this brush. I'm going to use it dry. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this Razzleberry. Maybe a little bit of the skin tone color here. And a little bit more white. I'm going to work that into my dry brush. And I'm going to just be start creating a little bit of blush on her cheeks. So I'm going to take a dry paper towel and remove quite a bit of this paint off of there. I just want a little bit of paint left on the brush to like create a soft color. And I'm just going to very lightly, hardly any pressure at all on this brush, add some of this color through here. I want to put the pink stuff on her face first so that um, I can come and shade around the hair. And we'll put a little bit of glow of this down on the chin. And I'm going to get a little bit more of that in my brush and remove some of it. And very, very lightly, just gently, gently, gently apply that on there. So we're getting a nice little blush to her cheeks. I'm going to put a little bit of this down here. I think I actually might come back and put a second coat on there. I'm just going to scrub a little bit of this into her skin. There's not hardly any paint on my brush, so I'm not really sure how much of that pink you can see it laying down. Not a whole lot. But I do want to put a second, a third coat there because that color underneath was so dark that um, it's not quite as opaque as I would like for the skin. So I'll put a quick third coat on it here. I'll try to remember to put that in my step-by-step -step notes. But if I forget, you're watching it right here and you can add that in. Just want a little bit more next to that strap. Okay. That looks better. So now we can definitely see the difference between the two colors of the skin. You can see I've blushed in a little bit of pink right there. Might blush a little bit of this up by her nose. We're going to be painting in her cheeks, so I'm not too worried about that. I really need that to get dry, so let me get it dry real quick. Okay, I've got her pretty dry here. I'm going to mix up a little bit more of that pink with our skin tone and a little bit of white right there on my brush. Still using a dry brush. Remove as much as I can so that I'm not going to be leaving hardly any paint on this surface. Put some through here. I'm just very lightly scrubbing some of that on. I'm 
maybe up here on the tops where the sun's maybe kissed her shoulders a little bit more. And that's looking pretty good. Don't get her too dark with this pink color because you'll have to come back and, and add your base color back in if you do that. So I don't have very much paint on my brush. And I think we got a nice glow of skin here. Now, I, I may want to use this brush later. I have more of these, but um, if you don't, take some hand sanitizer. Squirt some out on your palette. I'm going to do down here in the corner. It just takes a little bit. Then I'm going to clean the paint out of this brush with that hand sanitizer. I'm going to go to another piece of dry paper towel here. And remove the paint. A little bit more hand sanitizer. Work it in. Remove the paint. I'm not going to stick it in water because I want to use it here again in a little bit. So, or I may not. I haven't decided yet, but I want to have that option. So I'm just going to work, keep working the paint out of it. Taking it to a dry paper towel, and you can see the paint that's coming out of it. One more time here. I think I ought to get the majority of it out. But when you're done painting, you want to definitely go and wash it well. I still have quite a bit of pink paint in there. That alcohol will break the paint down. And... You just work it right out of your brush, okay? And it will evaporate out of there quickly so we can use it again here pretty soon. Okay, so I've drawn a line here on her face because she really is turned mostly away from us. So her cheek is right there and we're going to come down. So we're only going to see a very small amount of her lip right there. And so I want to paint that little tiny bit of lip in with some Razzleberry and white. Just a very soft pink. You could also add some of the flesh color if you want to get it um, pretty close to the pink that we put on the cheeks. This is a little bit lighter because I have a lot more white in here. And we're just going to lightly paint in her lips because we're not going to see a whole lot of it. We'll come back and darken this in a little bit. Um, so now that I can kind of see where I'm going with this, I, I want to put a little bit more uh, blush tone on her cheeks. That was with our red and our skin tone and a little bit of white. Dry brush. So if you're watching this video and then painting it, um, you can do a little bit more on her cheeks as you do it. But we want to definitely bring that out a little bit more on her cheeks right there. Because her cheeks are coming over her, you know, we're seeing most of her cheek. I'm going to erase this line right here if I can. And if I can't, if you've transferred that line on and you've got some of your dry brushing paint on it, it's a simple fix by taking some of your skin face color and just lightly going over that line and it will eliminate it right from... I'm going to put some on this line out here because I got a little bit on it and so now I can't erase it. Okay. So now we got a little bit more blush on the cheeks. 
I want to put a little bit of color inside the nostril. I'm going to take a little bit of raw sienna and a little bit of our flesh color. And just go inside the nostril with that. A little bit more raw sienna in there. I don't want to make it too dark, but it needs to have a little bit of contrast there. And again, I, I can't erase the line that I put on there to indicate where the nostril is, so I'll take my base color and just paint right over that. Okay, and we'll let that dry and then we'll come back and see what else we can do to the nostril there. Let me wide angle back out just a little bit. We want to start adding some shading on her skin here. Um, I'm just going to wash my scruffy brush out here because I have another one if I need to get another one. So for our shading on the um, skin, So I want to shade with a mix of this raw sienna and our flesh tone here. I want it to be just a little bit darker than what our um, flesh tone color is. And we'll go underneath the hair. I'm not worried about getting it on the hair because we're going to be adding layers on top of the hair and that will all get covered up but for now we'll go next to the hair on the skin I'm just giving that cheek a little bit time to dry before I go back and paint it so we're going to go around this hair here And this is just a very pale color of uh, a, just a slight, slightly darkening of the color of the flesh tone. So don't get too much raw sienna in this mix. You're going to have mostly the skin color. And go all the way down the back edge of the back here and make that just slightly darker flesh color a little bit of raw sienna a little bit of water to make the paint move we're going to go around the strap here this color Very narrow up here, and we'll get a little bit wider as we come down. I'm going to flip this around so I can go along the back edge of the strap. Just a narrow little, I've kind of got my brush tilted up so I can stay on just that edge that has the paint. So we can make just a little bit of a narrow this is almost too wide of a color change here. So I'm just going to take a damp brush and remove a little bit of that. A little bit more of our flesh color in that mix. Alright, let's come up here around her hair and we want this to be not spread way out on her cheeks go right along there. We're going to go underneath the jaw here a little bit. I'm going to mix a little bit more on my brush. And we're going to create an edge to her jaw. We're going to go on the nose here just a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to go back and repeat these other places. 
go along underneath these strands that are coming down, give them a little bit of shadow. And then apply a quick little second coat on here. And again, don't worry about getting it on your hair because the hair is going to have quite a few layers on it. Okay, we do want to go along the bottom down here. I'm going to mix a little bit more on my brush. I'm just using a flat brush for my shading here, but you can certainly use an angle brush. So I'm going to go along this edge. And I only have paint loaded on one edge of my brush. When we're floating, we only load on one corner of the brush. A little bit more raw sienna in there. A little bit more water in the mix, because when we pick up paint, we generally need some water so we can make the paint move. kind of down like this a little bit. I'm going to grab some of our skin base color here. And just gently blend those right there where they kind of meet. A little bit back here. And I think I want to put a little bit up here. Got that a little bit darker than what I wanted. But I do need to go around right here. So I'm going to take my flesh color, or our skin, skin tone mix that we made. That's why we mixed up so much, because we are definitely going to be needing this. I'm going to add a little bit of pink to it. Sienna. We want to make sure we're only loaded on one edge of the brush here. My paint is getting way over too far, so wash it off and try that again. Having a hard time getting flesh color here. Let's see. Nope, oh, it needs to be darker. A little more raw sienna. And I'm going to go with whew, a little bit more red or a lot more red. I want this here to be a little bit more on the reddish. So all I did was add a little bit of the razzle, I mean just a tiny, teeny little pin drop of razzleberry in there. And I think that's a little bit more pleasing color mix for the skin, for a shading color. Just putting that little bit of razzleberry in there made a huge difference. And put this along the bottom. Got a little tiny bit of razzleberry in there. Huge, huge difference. I want a little bit of this on my brush along there. And I think I want to put this color inside the nostril. A little bit of razzleberry 
and raw sienna in with the flesh tone color. Okay, that's looking pretty good for our shading there. So while we have it, we're going to come back with some highlight in just a minute, but while we have our shading going on here, let's do a little bit on the lips. I'm going to take the straight Razzleberry, a little bit of raw sienna, maybe not that much raw sienna, and I just mixed a little bit of raw sienna in with my Razzleberry here. And that's going to darken up. And I'm going to wipe off the excess paint and really tilt my brush up right here. And almost line it and come along the bottoms of both lips. That's a little bit darker than what I want, so I'm just going to dampen that and remove a little bit. I'm hoping that when we add our highlight there in the front, on the front part of the cheek, that it will really push those lips back. Okay, so it's really just kind of playing around with it to get it a nice shading color. I think before we move on and finish the highlight on here, I want to get her strap painted in. So I'm going to take my white and take some of the flesh color here because I want the dress to be a cream, cream color. And that might be too much close to the flesh teller, so I'll add a little bit of um, raw sienna in there. When we come back and highlight it with some white, it will look much better. I'm going to get it shaped nicely. So there we go with that. My paintbrush should keep hitting. So I think that makes her strap look a lot better. And then when we come back and highlight that, it will stand out a lot more. So that was white with some of our flesh color and a little bit of raw sienna. It makes a nice little cream color for that um, strap. And so now with the shading on there, we're definitely seeing a lot more definition and it's looking pretty awesome. Okay, let's start adding some highlights on here. So we're going to start with just a subtle highlight. So we're going to take our skin color mix and a little bit of white. So we're lightening up the um, color. So we'll do about an equal mix here. And we're going to brighten up on her chin. And I want to bring this all the way around. The top of her nose. 
So I'm going to tilt my brush up and just barely put some up there. Bring it up the nose and go around the back side of the nostril here. And anytime you feel like you get too much highlight or shadow, come back with your skin color and work some of that in there and that will definitely help. This is just our first highlight here. We'll be adding a second highlight on here. So this is our skin color and white. Just an equal mix there. Just dip into each one one time on your brush and just mix them on your brush. Okay, so I highlighted on the front of her neck right there where we could see it. Okay, I'm really not worried about getting it on her hair. I do want to put a little bit on this edge here. A little bit more white in the mix. And then a little bit of a highlight right through here. I'm just going to brush that in with what's left on my brush. A little bit of highlight. Don't get carried away. If you've got a lot of paint on your brush, just go ahead and remove it off onto your paper towel. And then we're going to repeat this. And the next time, we're just going to use white. Okay? So I've got my brush washed out. I'm just going to load some white paint in it. Just on that corner. Touch my paper towel so I can wick off excess stuff. I'm going to highlight on the chin here. And along the front of the cheek. on the top of the nose so we're building a lot more glow onto her Again, along, I'm going on each place that I highlighted before. Except right here. I may not do as much there. I may not do it at all there. I haven't decided yet. I'm just going to work some of that. I have such a small amount of paint on my brush. I can't even begin to tell you how small the paint is on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of work it into some of this lighter area of her skin. Load. I loaded water first and then the paint. And uh, touch my paper towel to wick out excess. I really want it to be brighter on her chin here. A little bit through there. I really want it to look like there's a, a bright glow on her face. Okay, maybe just a touch on the nose right there. So I would say do the white a couple of times to get it nice and bright. And I'll we'll put just a little bit there, reflective light maybe.
So I think that's looking pretty good for her flesh. Um, I'm going to leave it right there for now because I don't want to um, do too much until I get the hair. I'm going to come back to it after we do the hair. I, I got a little bit of white here. I'm going to add a little tiny bit of white. If I can get it to come off of my brush on her lips. Just a little glow of white. Her lips should not be super noticeable, so if, if they are so dark they are standing out, then please take them back with some of your skin tone color. And I still really feel like right next to the lips needs to be brighter. Right here. I really want these areas to look like the sun is really hitting those spots. Okay, that looks much better. So her lips should not be very noticeable. They're just kind of like, oh, okay, there's her mouth. I see her mouth now. Okay, so we don't want to make it extremely noticeable, okay? Now, I am not a portrait artist by any means. I have only painted uh, actually one actual portrait. <laughs> so, you know, um, I'm learning right along with you guys. I just kind of know how I want it to look. So I'm trying to go in that direction. Um, if you have a way that you think it would look better, by all means, if you're a portrait artist and you have a way that you feel like a little bit of highlight here or shading there would make it look a little bit better, then go for it. I can learn from you just as much as you can learn from me. So um, right now we are going to get ready to start working on her hair. We're going to start on the hair now. <clears throat> so I've got on my palette, I've got Antique Gold, Golden Straw, Sunny Day, and Snow White on my palette right here. And I'm going to start, and I've also got some of my raw sienna that's on there. So I'm going to start by taking some golden straw and some raw sienna and mixing them together a little bit. You can do about equal amounts or maybe just a little bit more golden straw than raw sienna. But I think I've got about equal amounts here. And we're just going to start creating the movement in her hair. So like down here. She's got, and I'm just using a round brush, and this is just roughing in her hair just by creating the movement that is going on here. Her hair is all pulled to the back, and I'm staying up on the tip and just putting in some loose strokes here. I'm just going to mix as I go so I don't have a whole lot mixed up on my palette here. Okay, I'm hope hoping to get her to, to blonde hair, but we shall see. Mix me some more here, add a little bit of water to my paint so I can get it to move easier off of my brush. take a little bit down these strands. We're going to define them more later. 
but we can put just a little bit. I don't want to completely cover up that color that's underneath right now. And then just decide what direction your hair is going to go when it is pulled to the back. So we get an idea of how the movement of the hair should be going. Mix some more, add a little bit of water to it. This first layer is going to be pretty subtle in here. We're bringing all of our hair back. A lot of this hair in here where the flowers are we will end up not seeing but you know we need to get the flow of the hair correctly so just paint right over where your flowers go if you need to add those lines back in later we can do that because we'll have a few strands of hair at the end coming over the flowers when we paint those in we'll have some loose hairs coming out you know around it just won't be the ones down here so we'll have a little quite a bit more movement to the hair than what we have right now so this is our first layer just that raw sienna and antique gold mixed together and we're getting some nice movement in the hair okay so um, we need to let this layer dry just a little bit and then we're going to get ready to mix up our next color okay our next layer we're going to add just straight antique gold so add a little bit <coughs> of water to your paint using your same round brush so we can get it to to flow nicely off of the brush I'm using a four round, but you can use a smaller round brush if you feel more comfortable that way. You could probably also use a filbert brush. And just begin adding some movement in the hair. It's kind of all going several different directions here or it's in a messy bun back here and this is just straight antique gold we use the, the mix first And I'm going to start creating a few looser ones here with this color. I might pick up just a tiny bit of that raw sienna so I can get some a little bit more depth in here to this. And you might want to go to a very 
fine detail brush here to get these more loose hairs. I'm going to start making some a little bit longer strokes to make the hair look more long and not short strands. And I'm staying up on the tip of the brush here. I'm not giving the brush pressure. I'm just loading a nice consistency of paint here and letting it flow off of the brush. So there's our next layer. We're getting we're seeing more and more movement in our hair now. And Okay, we're going to take antique gold and golden straw equal mix. And we're going to start putting in our next layer. I've switched to a filbert brush so I can get a little bit more fuller strokes here. Maybe not quite that full. But we're going to be layering on here. Anti-gold, golden straw, equal mix. I think I'll come back at the end and add Some more loose ones coming out in some other places. Right now I'm not going to worry too much about those looser strokes like I have, you know, out in here. And anytime you, you want to try not to cover up every single layer completely, but anytime you feel like you've lost a certain layer, you can certainly come back in and add that back in. You know, add just a few strokes of the color mix of that layer. And we probably will do that at the end, I'm sure.
these strandles, uh, these strandles, these little curly parts coming out of the messy bun, we want to make sure it looks like they connect, like they're just not starting and stopping like right where they come out of the hair. So you need to make sure you work some strokes down into that and uh, again maybe a detail brush would be good on on these thinner ones so don't feel like you have to stay with a, a thicker brush here That's looking pretty good. We're going to get ready to go to our next color now, and that's going to be just the straight um, golden straw with no mix in it. So we started out with our base color, which was raw sienna. We mixed antique gold. Okay, so then we took the antique gold and did it by itself, and then we did the antique gold mixed with the next color, which is golden straw. And now we're going to do the golden straw by itself so we can get more depth the more layers the more depth you get the more realistic it looks and uh, then we'll come back in and put some shadows and final highlights in here after we put our flowers in all right so let's take our golden straw we're just going to use straight golden straw now and now we're getting into some more detail layers so we definitely want to concentrate on how the hair is moving and again I'm using my filbert I have a four filbert here A straight golden straw. Now when I go down these these um, tendrils here, I'm not going to take a solid line down it now. I'm going to start creating some highlights in this hair and just do a hit and miss along here. I still want to make sure it looks like it's coming from within the hair itself. And you can decide which one of these is on top. Okay, so this one could be on top or that one could be on top. I think I'll put the thicker one on top, so I'll be shading along there later. I'm using the more flat side of the brush now. Instead of, instead of being up on the tip, on the edge of the brush, on the tip, I'm laying it flat like this now. But I'm still 
just barely letting those tips of the bristles go across. getting some nice hair color here. I think it's going to end up looking like a beautiful kind of strawberry blonde color, I hope. So that was just golden straw. So our next mix will be golden straw and sunny day equal mix. So I'm going to mix an equal amount here. A little bit of water mixed in there. And this one will really start popping and this is the one I'm going to take and start making some looser tendrils with because this is definitely going to start bringing in some highlights. And this is where you definitely want to start concentrating on exactly how you want your hair to look. So I want to try and start getting rid of some of this solid edge out here. Make it look a little bit more flowy. I may have to come back in with one of my other colors here. And help that out. Again, just a hit and miss along these tendrils here. We do want it to look like it's coming from the hair though, so... I'm giving just a little bit more pressure on the brush to make the hair look a little thicker. I'm still using the flat side of the brush. That was just a little bit too flat, but we can come back and fix that, so not to stress out. I gave just a little bit too much pressure on the brush there. Everything is fixable. After this layer, I think we're going to add in our roses. We'll add in our roses after this layer so we can start adding more detailed strokes with our next couple of layers of hair. I'm going to mix some more here. Got a little bit too much antique gold in that mix.
And I don't want this hard line out here. This strand just putting a little bit on the edges I don't want really hard lines on these layers so go to a smaller round brush if you need to That's looking pretty good. I might want to add another color in here before we go to straight white because I don't, before we start adding white into our paint because I don't want um, it to have such a drastic jump. So I'm going to grab another color. Okay, so I've got that layer dry. So before we add any more layers of hair, um, that was our antique gold and sunny day mix. Our next layer will be sunny day. I want to go ahead and put my roses in here because I want some hair to be around the roses a little bit more. And um, actually, I think we'll put one more layer of hair first. I think that would just work out best. So let's just do the straight sunny day. And you'll do you're doing less of each color, remember. Now when you go down your strands, you don't want to do the whole thing. You just want to do kind of a hit and miss. Definitely want to have some movement in your hair though. I'm still up on the tip of the brush here. I'm not... Even though I was using the flat side there, I was still just up on the tip. Again, on these smaller hairs over here. Go to a detail liner if you need to. If you uh, are not really good at staying up on the tip of a filbert brush, I highly recommend you going to a detail liner here. This is just sunny, straight sunny day. Starting to add some of our highlight layer in here now. still doing our best to see some of these layers but you know the more that you can layer like I said earlier the more realistic you can get it to look and we can come back with any layer that we feel like we're missing and add it back in. That's a great thing when you're making hair like this that you can you can bring that layer back if you need to. Okay, I think that's probably good enough. We're going to add our flowers in here now. I 
mean, you can leave it, just keep layering hair and not add any flowers to it if you prefer. Okay, I've got placement of my roses here, so they're going to get a little bit smaller as they go up. It's like a little <coughs> wreath that goes in the back of the hair. <coughs> this is the scary part when you're painting something, but don't be scared. <laughs> so I've got on my palette some desert cactus and some forest green. And I'm going to take those two colors on my brush. And I just want to, I'm going to wipe off some of it. And I just want to tap in around where my roses are going to be. Get a little bit of water so I can move my paint. Put some, like, s stuff behind. A little bit of water. So we're just tapping in kind of around. And creating a little bit of texture and depth here. Remember, we're going to be putting hair on top of this. You know, a few strokes here and there. But we need some, some background stuff here. Kind of tucked in to the hair. <coughs> so we need that in there first. Okay, now let's take our desert cactus. Mine is very dry, so I'm going to have to add some water to it. And I think I'll actually get a smaller brush here. This one is an 8. I'm going to go down to a 6 flat. And start painting my leaves where I want my leaves. With our desert cactus. So I've got a leaf here. And your leaves can be wherever you want them to be. I'm trying to see where I drew mine. I can't really see them now, so I'll just kind of wing it here. feel like you have to get tons of leaves so I feel like we need a little, another one here okay so I just base coated in my leaves okay it's just a few we don't have to to get carried away with these we're gonna come, come in and add some little filler stuff in with these flowers but for now we just want the leaves in there and we also want to um, put like an undercoating for the flowers so I'm going to take my razzleberry and I think I might mix a little bit of our skin color with it mostly razzleberry because I want it to stay kind of dark and we're just going to very loosely put in where we want our roses to be These roses back here at the back will be the biggest ones. And we added a little bit of that skin tone in here because it will make that razzleberry a little bit more opaque, but not too much of it because we want the under part of the roses to stay a little dark. So we definitely want to keep that a little bit darker. It's looking pretty already. I'm going to come in and quickly apply a second coat onto my leaves. Just to make them a little bit more opaque. Mix a little bit of water with your paint. Keep it nice and smooth. I 
might just do a straight color of razzleberry on here. Just to darken up the undercoats just a little bit. Let's begin shading on our leaves here. We're going to use forest green. Side load for a float. And then shade them at the bottoms of them. This is like your standard leaf. all of them at the base of the leaf. That's all we're doing right now. Forest green is what we're using. Take a little bit of that forest green. Oops, moved the wrong side of my brush, so I'll wash it out. We're going to come back and darken that shading here in a minute. Uh, I'm going to create uh, a center vein down these. We're not going to do a whole lot of detail on these leaves, I don't think. Might keep them a little bit more simple. We want the roses to be focal point. We'll have a little bit of filler stuff going in here. So I'm just creating a little center vein. Zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. the look of a center vein on there. And now I want to get some more razzleberry out and I want to mix a little bit of that in with my forest green and see if I can get a dark green color here. So I'm going to dip into my razzleberry and dip into my forest green. Maybe razzleberry one more time. So let's do two razzleberries to one forest green and we'll get us a nice dark green. And we'll darken at the base of all these leaves. there. So just a little darkness at the base of them. Okay, <clears throat> took me a minute to figure out what highlight color I wanted on our leaves. And I'm going to go with olive green. Just because olive green is a bright color, but it fades down into the design so beautifully. So just straight olive green here. We'll do it on the tips and maybe down one side. You can put a little bit 
in the center. Just a, a tiny little bit. Don't get carried away with this. And this is where you can kind of shape your tips of your leaves a little bit better. I'm keeping it more light towards the side of the face. That's kind of where the, the light is hitting. Remember, if your paint is not moving, it's just dragging and being dry, you need to mix a little bit of water in your brush. I think I'll come back with a second coat in here. Just a second quick coat here. I think I already did this one, but just in case, I'll do it again. And that looks much better. So now we're going to work on our roses, and then we'll do some filler stuff around them. Okay, so every designer does roses different. Now, if you have a specific way that you like to do roses, I recommend you do them that way because everybody is different. So I'm going to put some fresh razzleberry out here. I want to take a little bit of my skin tone, just starting to dry out, and mix my razzleberry with it. I just want to lighten up the razzleberry just a little bit. Make it like this real pretty pink. Maybe add just a little bit of white to it. I want them to be more on the soft pink side. Okay, so I've got a nice light pink there. And we're going to paint in our roses. Now I've got a tin, um, this is like a uh, bright, it's got the shorter bristles, not the longer bristles of a um, more flat base coating brush. Let's see if I have a tin flat so you can compare them here. Eight. Yeah, oh, maybe I don't have a tin. See, the bristles are longer, and this is considered like a bright or a chisel brush, okay? So this is what I'm going to be using. You can use an angle brush if you like to use angle brushes for making roses. So I'm going to load one side 
one side of the brush with some of that pink mix and one side with white. It's a double load here. Pink on one side, white on the other. And I'm going to start stroking in my back petals here. Okay, I'm going to do this all the way across so I can let each layer dry. a little bit more of that raspberry make that a little bit darker and you decide where the back of your rose will be by simply applying the back petals wherever you want them to be So this one will be turned up that direction. These two will be just straight on full at us. And I think this one I might tilt downward. And I could go to a smaller brush here for this one. So we've got our back strokes in, okay? So I'm going to finish these three out with this bigger brush and then those two I'm going to go to a smaller brush. Um, so I'm going to put my next layer in. Actually I'm going to put this back layer back in because not quite dark enough. I really need it to be dark. Okay, now I can come back in and put that front layer back in. So I'll move on to the next one and put a second layer in here. So I did two across the back slightly curving them and then two kind of almost making a C stroke. A backward C stroke and a forward C stroke. I'm going to put an extra stroke here. Almost a C stroke. It's like a half a C. And put a stroke here, like a half a C. And then put a layer in here. I'm going to put a stroke here because it needs it. And a stroke here because it needs it. And let's see if I can put my more forward ones back in here. Okay, I'm going to add one more stroke of a petal out here. So I'm going to put my brush straight up and down, lay it down, and curve it. So we're doing that kind of C stroke here. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple up here. Okay, I want to do one more row here. may just be a single stroke and it may be two strokes depends on how big your rose is so we got three rows right there on the back now before I go any further I want to tap some of this green I'm going to take some of the uh, two greens and just mix them together on my brush 
and tap a little bit down in here. I no, don't want to tap it in there yet because I haven't. Just a little bit in the center. You could probably go with, you know, some yellow, but I think green will work best on here. Okay, now I need to get that dry. And I'm going to load my brush with my white and my pink mix. And we're going to start stroking across the front. And I'm going to make some more of those C strokes out here. And I'm just picking up a little bit of white and putting some strokes across the front here. Okay, let's do this one. Those are some pretty big roses in our hair. We're definitely going to have to add some filler flowers in there. I probably should have gone to a little bit smaller brush here. Try and contain this rose a little bit more. there. Ooh, that was way too much paint. And now I need to grab some white. Okay. So there's three of the flowers. I'm going to do a much smaller brush up here for these because I don't want those roses to get ginormous like these two back here got pretty big. I'm going to have to add a leaf in there to kind of separate those a little bit. Okay, let me wide angle out just a little bit here. I want to start creating some filler stuff in here just a little bit before we add some more strokes of hair. So I'm going to take my um, desert cactus and mix a little bit of forest green in with it. And I'm going to start creating... Oh, I really want to stay off of my rose here. I think I'll add a little bit of razzleberry in there to darken that. Because I want to create some little stem stuff coming off. And this kind of comes around into her hair from the top. And then I'll just thin it down. You can use a detail liner. I'm using a small round brush. And I'm just going to create some, some little stem things coming off that I can add some stuff to. I don't want these to be fat or thick or anything, so don't get carried away with how detailed they look. We're just kind of adding some placement in here for some stuff that we want to add. So we want to keep it kind of soft and thin. And if you need to restroke the white on your flowers, you can do that just by side loading some white and stroking it on there for, for some bright areas on your rose. Any place that you want it to be a little bit brighter. Just a little side load of white.
and just create a little brighter highlight on generally the more forward petals kind of be up on the edge of it so you're not filling in the whole petal and uh, down here I need to add a little bit more it looks like flower just looked like it needed a few more little strokes there in the front. Okay, so we got some placement for some little filler stuff or maybe baby's breath stuff. So I'm going to grab a little stippling brush. Okay, use whatever little small scruffy brush that you have. I have a, a domed one that is a size 4. This is a Royal Majestic I got at Hobby Lobby if they still sell this brand. I've had this for a long time. So I'm using it dry. I'm picking up a little bit of our skin color here and tapping it into my brush. And we're going to start adding some of this color. Creates some like baby's breath stuff in here. our skin color. This is just placement. Don't overfill this. We're going to come back with some lighter colors here. This is just kind of getting an idea where we're going. And we may add some other little stroke flowers in here. I don't know what I call filler flowers. We'll just have to see how it works out. We'll have our hair to add in here, and then we can come up and touch touch up and, and add anything that we need to add. So right now we're just adding some baby breath type stuff in here. And I'm not sure if you noticed, but I did come back in and add a leaf here between these two a little bit. Uh, it was just too much, too much rose there for me, and I probably should have tilted that rose out more. But I didn't, so we're going to just stay with it. Should have made it more of a side view of a, of a rose instead of a completed rose. So you can adjust that as you're painting if you're watching this first. Okay, I washed my brush out. Now I'm going to dry it out as best I can. This is, this is very dense here. Um, I'm going to go into my white and get some of that in my brush and I'm going to come in and highlight on this baby's breath. It's best to use the brush dry because it leaves much better texture but I only have one of these brushes so I'm going to work it out the best I can by offloading. Every time I load paint on this brush I'm going to offload um, onto my paper towel so I don't have a ton of paint on the end of it and I don't want to cover up all that color that we put underneath and I want to try and keep this light and airy load, offload and very lightly tap
And then come back and brighten any place that you feel need just a touch bit more. Okay, remember we're going to be putting some, some pieces of hair over this. I do want to add some shading in here to kind of push some of that stuff into the back. I don't think I'm going to add any filler flowers. I think I'm going to keep it just roses and baby's breath. And I may want to come in and tap a little bit more white on that in a little bit to just brighten it up more. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to shade on here. So I'm going to grab some forest green, side load forest green. Maybe a little bit of the razzleberry in there to make that a little bit darker green. Touch my paper towel. And I'm going to create just some shading maybe at the base of this baby's breath. So the baby breath looks a little bit more behind the roses instead of on top. I needed to get a smaller brush here. This brush is really taking over. Just next to the roses where the baby's breath is because that's going to help push that baby's breath back a little bit. And then we can tap a little bit more white on top. I'm going to get a different brush because that one's wet and I do have another one of those. Is this one four? Four. So I do have two of them. So I'm going to go into my white and just a little bit brighter. Just a couple little taps here and there. Don't uh, get too carried away with it. And then we're going to come in and start adding our top layers of hair in here. Definitely good enough for that. Let's white angle out just a little bit so you can kind of see it a little bit better. And that is looking so pretty. I really like that. Okay, I want to try and wash a little bit of Razzleberry onto the bottoms of some of these roses. Maybe inside just a little bit. Kind of give them a little bit of weight. So it's just a thin little layer of paint. Razzleberry. With a lot of water in my brush so I can thin that paint and make it transparent. And I think that will help. Darken these just a little bit. And give them just a little bit extra something in there. Okay, on to our hair now. Okay, I am not liking this rose sticking way out here. I started to add two leaves on the outside, but it still just sticks it out way too far. So, I'm going to show you how to fix this leaf. I'm going to come, or this rose. I'm going to cover this rose up with some green. And I might try and scrape off some of the higher parts of the rose with my fingernail. 
You know, the paint's not completely cured yet. So we can do things like this until it gets completely dry. And I'm just going to paint this in with our green. I'm going to repaint this rose completely. I still see some high spots on here. I want to take them off. I'm just scraping across it with my fingernail. That looks much better. So I'm going to redo that rose completely. So I'm going to let it dry. Come back and put another coat of the um, forest or the um, desert cactus on there, and then we're going to restroke the rose. Okay, while that's drying, let's put her eyelashes in because we want it. We want them to be behind the last layer of paint, so uh, of hair, the last layers of hair. So I'm going to take my forest green and add a little bit of red razzleberry to it. Quite a bit of razzleberry to it because that will make this really dark color here. And I didn't want to use black in here, so this is mostly razzleberry with a little bit of forest green. It makes this really dark color here but it's not black so it won't take away. I'm using a detail liner brush. Thin your paint to inky consistency. This is very important because we can barely see her lashes out here. And so we want to keep these super crazy thin. You don't have to add these if you don't want to. I'll go in and erase my graphite lines here after they dry kind of see how the eyelashes look, but it's just a few little strokes out there. Oh, <laughs> and then paint your whole face. Just a few little strokes out there. Just very fine feathering strokes on there. Nothing wild or crazy. And that was with a detail liner brush. So, and that should dry pretty quickly because the paint is super thin. And I'll erase my graphite lines that are there. And then we can see just the, the eyelashes kind of peeking through. Now we'll, we'll bring some hair that will cover that just a little bit more around the front when we put our lighter layers on. But she's looking pretty good, I think. I'm uh, pretty pleased with how she's looking. So I need to get this a little bit drier and then we're going to paint a new rose on here. Okay, so I want my rose to be pretty small here. So I'm taking my white eraser with some water and I'm going to try and erase these layers of paint and get to the background without removing the background. Paint has not had time to cure, so it should it should erase. It's just a slow process, very gentle pressure here. If you push too hard, you're going to go all the way down to the base coat of the board. And we don't want to do that since we created a very pretty background here. So I'm just going to continue on here erasing, adding water, erasing very softly, getting these layers of paint off of here, wiping them off as I go so I get them out of the way. You can see we're already getting down to the under color, so I'm going to make sure I just give gentle pressure because I don't want to erase that background color. Okay, so I did remove a, some of the color from the background. So I'm going to streak some of that back in there with our colors that we used, which was the Media Fluid Green Gold, and I believe I used some Cerulean Blue or maybe some of the yellow with this one because this looks like it has a little bit of yellow in it. So I'll put a little tiny bit of all three of those out. And 
if I don't get it to match perfectly, it's not a big deal because the background is variegated colors. I'm going to try my best. And it was just, that's too green. So let me add some blue in there. Still a little bit too green. I'll have to come back in and add my um, baby's breath back in. Definitely need some more blue in there, so I'm going to grab some blue. Mix that in. There we go. That's a much better color. Alright. I'm going to loosely blend that and then tap out here on the outer edges with my paper towel. So it will look like that had always been that green color. A little bit more blue, I think. And that will get it pretty good. Barely tap. Wipe my brush off, and I'm just going to streak through that. And remove it from my hair. Okay, and that's how we can kind of fix that area up. This is baby's breath. This is my rose here, and I'll probably put a little leaf coming out there off of it, a small one, not a great big one. So um, I think I'm about ready to paint my, my rose back in, and I know it's got that um, green color there, but we're going to put some of this red in here. And hopefully be able to tilt this rose the direction I want. I'm probably going to put a leaf in between right here. So I want to keep this rose pretty small and tilt it out. So and then I'll come back and stroke this rose, some, some uh, petals on this rose. So this is how you can fix things. I, I don't want you to ever stress out about making what you think is a critical error in your painting because paintings are always fixable. I want you to remember that. You can always fix them. It's a little bit harder when you have a background that is multiple colors. But because we use such thin layers of paint here, we can get pretty close to the color that we had. And that's all we need to do. We don't we don't have to stress out about it's ruined, I'm just going to throw it away, paint over it, start over, whatever. You don't have to do that. So I don't, I don't want you to, to feel like that's the route that you need to take. So this is how you fix things. Um, I'm going to apply a quick second coat of this pink on here. It's not quite dry. I need this to get dry. I want to make sure I contain that rose, a smaller rose, and I want to turn it outwards. So I'll be using an angle brush when I paint it in this time so I can keep it smaller like I did these up here. So let me get this dry real quick. So I do want a couple of small roses on, or leaves on here. So I'm going to base those in so we kind of know where they're going to be. I'd like for my petals to be kind of over these leaves just a little bit. So I'm just going to put a couple of small leaves out here. And then we'll add a little bit of baby's breath. We'll redo that baby's breath and this baby's breath and, and maybe put just a little bit peeking out right there. And I think that's going to help the composition of that wreath that's going around her hair look so much better. And I'll restroke this in and maybe redo this leaf and this leaf down here this leaf will now be up here and this one will be up here so I'm going to wait till I get the rose done before I redo these leaves so see everything is all fixable let me grab my angle brush here I'm going to use a um, quarter inch angle brush which is what I used on these two up here and I'm going to load my white and my raspberry and I'm going to start stroking some small strokes in here. I'm going to go ahead and get the shape of this one. Where I want it to go and how I want it to be formed. A little 
little bit of water in my brush. My paints are all starting to dry out. I think it's time to get a new palette. Just a little bit of green in there. We won't see a whole lot. I'm not even sure I want the rose to be quite this big, so. And that green needs to be dry, so I just put green paint in my white. And I don't want that, so let me get that dry. And reload here. Get the green out of my brush for sure. So I'm going to stay up on the toe and just bring some white in here. Put a little bit of pink down in here so when I stroke over it, it will look nice. Okay, so I've got it turned out more here so I can make a leaf here. Let me restroke this uh, bigger flower. some more white. I'm going to wash over that area though with some darker red and I think I'll put a leaf right there. So a second layer on my green leaf here. And I want to make a leaf there. got a leaf there and I can continue and bring that one down and re base coat it but I want to bring a leaf actually I want to bring it the other way I want to bring it over the rose this way this will all be in your line drawing so it will all be accurate I'm just showing you how to fix things when you have something that looks wrong or you don't like it. So I think I will put an extra leaf here. Okay, so we'll have a little more leaf stuff going on back here. And that's okay. And we'll put our baby's breath. I'm going to go ahead with this brush. I think I can get some small enough lines. For my baby's breath. We're going to have restroke that. We're going to have just a little bit coming out here. And I'll probably restroke this and a little bit here. So not not too much. We don't want to get it too much going on back there. But um, we can definitely get some stuff started. I'm going to add a little bit of white with this round brush to lighten up. Just a little bit on that rose. It's, it's tucked behind so it doesn't have to be perfect in any way. And then I'm going to start shading on my leaves and do some touch-up work on that other rose and get our baby's breath back in. But I'm going to show you this whole process so that you can see it. So this rose is going to be shaded here. I'm going to reshade this one just a little bit. Or this leaf is going to be shaded. And now we've got one here. I'll zoom in just a little bit. So this petal goes up like that. I'll bring a, a stroke of the rose over over it. And then these two are going over the rose this way. And we have this rose, that's, this leaf that's right here. So I 
can add a little bit more color on that one. Stroke a little center vein in there. Back in that one. And this one needs to be a little bit darker with this color before I add my next darkest color. Okay, that's looking much better. And then I may want to come in and add some more leaves along through here and bring some up over the roses more. Like I'm thinking I want a leaf right there. And a leaf coming up right here. Maybe a small leaf here. And a small leaf here. I've got this one here, but I think I want to repaint it. So, I think I will adjust my comp composition here and add some more leaves in here. So, what you will do as you paint this is you'll do, you'll, you'll paint your leaves in like I did first. Then you'll come in and add the line drawing to the ones on top so that you can stroke your roses in. And it doesn't matter how the roses end up looking where the leaves go, uh, but you want it to look like it's under, not like you stopped where the leaf is going. So we're gonna put some leaves on top. So you wanna add your, your leaves on top, your line drawing for your leaves on top after you have painted your roses. And I think that will help it look much fuller and much better composition-wise. So, I think I will get those other leaves painted in very quickly and you can kind of see where we're going with that. I'm going to go off camera and finish all the leaves because they are all done the same way that we did the other ones. see how this is going to look a little bit more full and then we'll come back in and redo some of our baby's breath. And I think I might have one more leaf up here. So like I said your line drawing will have all of these leaves in it so don't worry too much about that. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm going to leave, leave it where the leaves are. And when I do my line drawing, I will try to write on there top leaf so that you know that those are the ones you'll come back and transfer on after you paint the roses. Okay? After you paint the roses and painted your baby bre baby's breath in, you'll come in and add these top leaves, paint them in, and then you can come in and touch up your baby's breath where you need to touch it up, okay? Hope that makes sense. Okay, I have all my leaves done. I'm gonna come back in and retap some of my white on my baby's breath. I went ahead and put my uh, first layer baby's breath color down here, which was the skin tone. So, I'm just going to tap a little bit, like I want a little bit coming up over that leaf I just added, and maybe a little bit here. It's going to kind of push some of those leaves back just a little bit. And then I want to put some out here on this. I don't want tons of baby breath out here. I want it to stay pretty tight. 
Maybe add a little bit in there. Bring it all together. <clears throat> Just give it some softness and and then you can go back on any of your um, roses that you need to and add a little bit of highlight of white. This rose out here is way darker than the rest of them but it's kind of behind so I don't mind it so much. Um, but I think I will put just a little bit of white on there. And then we're going to be ready to finish the hair and be done with this one. I have just a tiny bit of white on my brush right there. And then I want to put a little bit of white right here. And I'm going to leave that rose like it is. I'm not going to do any more to it. But I think that looks um, much better having that rose smaller. I didn't have my pink color quite the same as it was up here, but I think it's going to be okay. So uh, there is our roses. I might wash a little bit of that Razzleberry onto that one just so it has a little bit of that pink. It's darker too because I had that green underneath it. So we'll put some of the pink down here by the leaves. Give it that little bit of shadow look and that brings it a little bit closer to the other ones now. A little bit in the center and I think that's going to Help that one look a lot better. And they're looking good. I like how they look. I think they look great. A little bit more of this color. This is that Razzleberry. Just what was left in my brush. I'm just putting it in here. There wasn't too much left in my brush, so just kind of darken around the roses. You can play with those roses quite a bit and add more highlights and stuff to them. But I think I'm going to call them done. Let me wide angle out so we can see it a little bit better. I think that looks great. So now we're going to finish her hair with our next layer. I'm going to get a clean palette real quick so we can move on from there. Okay, I've got my fresh palette. So we're going to start here with uh, finishing our hair. So the last layer that we did was um, Sunny Day and I believe Golden Straw Mix. Actually, it was Sunny Day by itself. So we're going to take Sunny Day and Light Buttermilk and mix those together. I'm going to go back to my Filbert brush here. And I'm just going to mix equal amounts. I'm going to spritz some water over here on this other side of my palette so as I need water I can just grab it from my palette. I just spritzed water there. So I have clean water. My water in my basin is pretty dirty. So we're going to start with this color and this is where we're going to add our final layers. So you definitely want to show exactly how this hair is laying. And I'm up on the side of the brush. I'm not using the flat side because I definitely want to have more controlled stroking here as we put these top layers on. And she's 
she's looking gorgeous. Right, I'm going to do these down here real quick. So I want to see where they're coming from, from the hair. I just don't want them to start at the edge. They need to start up in the hair somewhere. And I'm not doing it down the whole thing. I'm just hit and miss. And again, on these thinner ones, you might want to go with a liner brush. And this hair is curled around, pulled back up into there. And then we're going to start up here. Stroking around, zooming in just a little bit. And I'm going to bring my liner brush in in a minute and, and put some loose ones coming off of the, the hair right here over her face. Isn't that looking just beautiful? And again, we'll have some coming up over our flowers a little bit. Some loose hairs coming in and over. I'm going to mix some more, grab some water. here. Remember to stay up on the very edge of the brush. That's the only way you're going to get these beautiful delicate hairs flowing um, through this piece. See, I just made that one come right over. Don't be afraid to do that. Keep your paint a nice consistency. it's looking beautiful. I think her hair is looking great. I want to pull a few loose ones. So I'm going to grab my liner brush here. I want a few tendrils coming like over here. Make sure they're coming from the hair somewhere, not just from the edge. So we can just make some really soft stuff coming off. This is that, that mix we're using. And 
this is where we can define a little bit more on our ends and make them a little bit more playful. I don't have to give them such blunt stopping. And this is what makes it really fun, is adding these little bit of detail things that is really going to make this seem more natural. Okay, and that's just with that um, yellow. We'll come back with this detail brush here in a minute and add some more stuff on top. But for now, let's see, that was the mix of a light buttermilk and sunny day. So now we're going to put just a few strokes of just light buttermilk in there for some brighter highlights in her hair. So I'm going to grab some buttermilk, or light, but this is light buttermilk, and get some clean water because I don't want to tint this. And again, I have my Filbert brush. So this is where we're just going to add just a little bit of this for some brighter highlight in her hair. And then we're going to do some shading in here to separate some sections. A little bit out here on these, kind of hit and miss. Don't fill in the whole strand. I love this messy bun look for this hair. I think it's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Don't do a whole lot of this color, but we want highlights going throughout the hair. I think she's looking pretty good here. And I'll highlight a little bit on those squiggle ones.
Make sure I get all my ends looking nice and crisp. Don't want no frayed, frayed edges on the ends. looking pretty good. We're going to add a little bit um, some some looser ones on top here in a minute but for now we want to do a little bit of shading on the hair and then we'll come back and add some of our bright bright highlights. Okay, so I want to shade with a little bit of um, raw sienna. Very sheer color of this. I'm working it into my brush with some water that's in my brush so I can make it very, very, very sheer. I'm going to touch my paper towel because I certainly don't want to um, lay in a lot of this and we're just going to create some places where it looks like this hair lays over that hair etc etc just give it a little bit more depth certainly play around with this as much as you want to but try and keep your colors as light and sheer as you can want an extremely transparent color here. I'm going to go a little bit around the flower stuff. of shadow there. We're using such a small amount of paint. Please do not use too much paint. You will not be happy. You'll be frustrated. And you may even have to come back in and stroke some of your layers of hair back in. So this step so important to keep light. create a little bit of kind of like bend in the hair. I'll have to zoom in for that because I didn't even get it on camera shot. So I want this hair to look like it's curved, almost like ribbon would be curved. I can tell which side I had my paint on. So I'll put a little bit right there. Let these ends look like they're curved back. And then we want to separate, um, define which one is on top here. So we want to put a little bit of shading on these. Okay, 
Okay, so let's separate these two right here. Just a tiny little bit of paint. Okay, one more here. This one. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to wide angle back out. And that's a little dark right there on that one, so I'm going to remove a little bit of it. Damn brush and my finger. I'll take care of it. Okay. Alright, now so that finishes the shading part. Um, you can come in and add more depth if you want to. Um, I am not going to because I like it just the way it is so I'm going to add a few strokes of my final highlight color. Okay so let's add just a few um, detail strokes in here. Now I've got white here. I'm not sure I want to use straight white so I think I'll mix it with some um, light buttermilk and get an inky consistency here and come in and add some of our final highlights. Now these highlights we want to keep it more towards the front of the hair. That's where the light is hitting. We'll mix here. I'm going to come back with a round brush, I think, and do some of those because that's going to get my lines too small. So I'm going to grab my round brush, and load up with this paint, and stroke some of this mix of white and buttermilk in here. I want to keep it on this side mostly because this is our light side. So this is the sunlight hitting more over here. And if you want to, you can come back with just a few strokes of just white. But I think I will just keep it this mix of white and light buttermilk. I think that's going to make me the happiest. Give her just a little bit more of a highlight in her hair. some up here because the light is hitting on the top of her head a little bit so we'll pull some of this and I'm using just a number one round so I can keep this pretty light and give it some movement less and less as we work our way back here. If 
But I think that looks pretty good. I'm very happy with how her hair looks. I don't think I'm going to stroke any just white in there. Um, you certainly can add just white if you want some brighter highlights in there. I'm not sure that I would like just some plain bright white highlights, so I think I will leave mine. And if you feel like you've lost any of your layers at all, you can come back and just put a few strokes of those colors in there. I don't feel like I've lost any. I feel like I got the depth in the hair that I wanted and the way I wanted the hair to move. I feel like I, I got that nicely. Probably could have done less wavy up here and just more controlled, smoother strokes like I did here, pulling it back. But... Um, Overall, I think it looks uh, pretty good. So um, I think I will call this one a done project. She was pretty fun to do, I think. Um, very, very much easier than I expected. I, because I, this is painting outside my box for me, so I expected it to be a little bit more difficult. Oh, we haven't finished the strap. Um, we're just going to take a small brush. The strap's going to be pretty easy. I almost forgot about the strap. And take a white brush, a, a small brush with some white paint, and we're just going to tap some white paint along that strap. Not do anything too difficult with this. Almost like a dry brushing on here. I don't want the strap to be distracting in any way. But we kind of need to see that it's a more of a white or cream colored strap. So we just need that highlight on there. And this is just with Snow White. Barely have any paint on my brush. Very lightly tapping. All right. Right angle out and I think we need a little bit more white here in the front because this is where it's the brightest so brighter through here And then it will fade away as we come down the back. I'll grab some buttermilk and put that down here. It's not quite so bright. It makes a little bit of raw sienna with that. So we can tone this down back here. So it's mostly white, and as you get to the bottom, you can add a little bit of light buttermilk and raw sienna to keep that light. I'm going to wash my brush out because I want to put white one more time up here. Keep that bright. Okay, there we go. Now we're done. Now we're done after we finish that strap. All right, let me know what you think of this one. I think it was a super, super fun project. Crazy. I just thought this would be one of my most difficult ones to figure out, but it turned out pretty awesome. Okay, everybody, if you have not yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified every single time that I post a video. Please like, share, and comment on my videos. I appreciate every single one of you. I cannot wait to see you on the next video. Thanks so much for painting with me, everybody. Bye-bye.